wait. I think probably the most high profile case I've ever tried would be the state of Texas versus Shantae Mallard. And in that case, Shantae Mallard was accused of and was convicted of driving a car, striking a man. As she struck him, he became impaled in her windshield. She then tried to remove him from her windshield. When that was unsuccessful, she drove him home while he was still alive. And she drove him into her garage closed the door, apologized to him as she could hear him moaning. And she went inside of her house and he subsequently died. And we charged her with felony murder and we charged her with tampering with evidence because later on the investigation revealed that number one, she had left his body at what's called Cobb Park. She had removed the car seats from her car and burned them in her backyard. Um, so there are a number of different ways that she tampered with evidence in that case. They called that case the windshield case, the windshield murder. They were running wires, they were running electricity, they were setting up cameras, they were setting up microphones. In fact, the camera from the O.J. Simpson case was placed strategically in the corner of the courtroom, and it was a case that was covered by Court TV. And that's not really something that's known much now, but back then that was where the big high-profile cases were seen. People could watch them in real time. And I remember also as we began one of the uh, camera people for Court TV ask us if we wanted to be mic'd and they ask every single attorney and I was the only female attorney. Um, so there were three on the state side and there were two attorneys on the defense side and I was the last person to be asked and everybody said, yes, I want to be mic'd. Yes, I want to be mic'd. Yes, I want to be mic'd. And they got to me and I said, no, I don't want to be mic'd. And everybody looked at me and said, why? And I said, if I drop an F-bomb, I do not want to be recorded for posterity. <laughs> and so I said, no, thank you. And then immediately everyone else after me said, um, can I change my vote? <laughs> can I say no, thank you again? So then I don't think anyone was mic'd for the trial. Well, I wish I could tell you that it was because of my stellar reputation or the number of cases that I tried, but it, it really comes down to a real estate proverb, location, location, location. The police officers had contacted my partner, Richard Alpert, whose office was right next door to mine and said, we have this crazy set of facts. We want to get authorization for an arrest warrant. And he came down to tell me and I said, well, let's run a search warrant first. And I think it was really my proximity to Richard's office more so than anything I'd done in my career. And that's how we became trial port partners on the case. I was incredibly nervous. In fact, before I gave opening statement, Richard leaned down to me and said, you're getting ready to introduce the world to this case, which sounds really like an exaggeration. But back then we had things like the Drudge Report and it was one of the very first cases where the arrest warrant affidavit was made public nationally within 72 hours of her arrest. And so all of a sudden we had the world's attention. I mean, when I say the world, we had people from other countries reaching out to us. And so before I gave opening statement, Richard said, this is where you introduce this case to the world. The Dredge Report actually had some of the information incorrect. So we had to address that as well. Um, so I was incredibly nervous, especially when Richard told me that I thought I was going to throw up an opening statement. But the other thing um, that I remember about the case is the setting or the scheduling of the trial was worked around my maternity leave. I had my first child in December before we tried the case. And so I returned for maternity leave in March and we tried the case that summer. And so I had a six month old at home. And one of my biggest, I had a lot of fears in that case, but one of my biggest fears as a mother and as a trial lawyer was I, I was still breastfeeding, still pumping, and I was so afraid that I was gonna leak on national TV, but I didn't. <laughs> she was convicted of felony murder, um, which means in Texas, it means you're in the process of committing one felony and in committing that one felony, you do an act clearly dangerous to human life that results in the death of someone. And so she was convicted of felony murder and she was also, well, she pled guilty to tampering with evidence as well. And the jury gave her the maximum sentence on the tampering with evidence case. And they gave her 50 years in prison on the felony murder case. It was a big sentence. It was a terrible crime. 